Many people think of China as a one-party state. And while the Communist Party is the main one, there are others. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. It's been said that China is a one-party state and that the only party in China is the Chinese Communist Party. China is ruled by, it's a one-party state. The one-party state has no intention of creating a liberal multi-party democracy. The Chinese Communist Party rules and according to the party will continue to rule indefinitely. Xi is putting in place a modernized version of Mao's Communist Party. He thinks of all Chinese companies as instruments of a one-party state. Most importantly, it created a huge rift with China, a one-party state that thinks Taiwan is part of its territory. Yet, China has been claiming that it's not only a democracy, but a strong, vibrant, whole process democracy. Yeah. Democracy thrives in China about as well as a banana thrives in a volcano. Xi Jinping once said that without democracy, there would be no socialism, socialist modernization, or national rejuvenation. But wait, I thought China was communist. You know, since the one party everyone talks about is the Chinese Communist Party. Is this like how that cereal is called Apple Jacks despite not tasting like apples? So let me get this straight. China's got democracy, socialism, communism, capitalism, authoritarianism, totalitarianism, nepotism, and the Tao of Pooh. But back to China's democracy. Chinese officials became obsessed with the definition of democracy back in 2021, when the U.S. held its first summit for democracy. In short, Taiwan was invited, but China was not. And that made China angry. No wonder everyone thinks they're a one-party state. The one time someone holds a party and they're not invited, they flip out. China dismissed the snub as the U.S. not having an inclusive enough definition of democracy. Some in the West claim that there seems to be no democracy in China and that the Communist Party of China is just authoritarian and autocratic. This actually reveals their hostile mindsets and intentions. Namely, democracy is just a tool to repress anyone who disagree with them and to contain the development of other countries. Changing the definition of words to try and match your version of reality? Yeah, that sounds just like that democratic society they had in 1984. Most people think of democracy as a government by the people, but how is China defining democracy here? It integrates process-oriented democracy with results-oriented democracy, procedural democracy with substantive democracy, direct democracy with indirect democracy, and people's democracy with the will of the state. So basically, if you say democracy enough in one sentence, you've got a democracy, right? Are they just saying democracy in the mirror and hoping it'll show up like Candyman? If you get through all the word soup, though, it really boils down to one basic idea, that Chinese citizens are incorporated into every level of the decision-making process, even though they're not the ones actually making the decisions. Don't think too hard about it. It'll make your brain explode. One of the ways that the CCP says it does this is through different political parties, democratic political parties. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. China claims it is a model of socialist democracy that covers all aspects of the democratic process and all sectors of society. One of the ways it claims to cover all segments of society is through different political parties. And yes, China does have political parties besides the Communist Party, at least on paper. It's kind of like how there are adhesive bandages besides Band-Aids. They exist, but you didn't realize it, did you? Here's how Chinese state-run media describes them. The Communist Party of China, or CPC, acts as the ruling party, but cooperates with eight other groups to discuss and manage state affairs. 
the eight parties are the Revolutionary Committee of the Chinese Kuomintang, China Democratic League, China Democratic National Construction Association, China Association for Promoting Democracy, Chinese Peasants and Workers Democratic Party, China Jurgong Party, Jusan Society, and Taiwan Democratic Self-Government League. See, China has democracy. It has political parties that have democratic in the title. Surely that makes them democratic. Kind of like how apple jacks must surely taste like apples. But as the video points out, the Chinese Communist Party is the preeminent party. It's not like other parties can rise up and challenge its leadership. There are other political parties only because they accept the CCP's leadership. They've been in China's political system off and on since 1949 when the Communist Party took over China. They actually started out having some power, but after a few years, they eventually just became puppets of the CCP. The government describes them as having a supervisory role, because the CCP is the actual ruling party. This is kind of like saying students are there to supervise the teachers. The power dynamic clearly prevents these political parties from being a check on the Communist Party. These eight parties are based on the principles of long-term coexistence, mutual supervision, treating each other with sincerity, and sharing each other's weal and woe. To all those who don't study Old English, that means sharing each other's joy and hardship. So what can these eight political parties do? Well, not much. Their leaders are selected by the Chinese Communist Party, so they can't even choose their own leadership. They're part of a body called the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, or CPPCC. This body doesn't have any real power besides offering proposals and giving advice, which I'm sure goes over well. The guy who banned Winnie the Pooh because someone said he looks like him is probably great at hearing criticism. The People's Consultative Conference is part of what China calls its Patriotic United Front Organization. The United Front system is about using all of society to influence public opinion at home and abroad neutralize opposition, and generally being the eyes and ears of the CCP. So instead of these eight political parties being a check on the CCP, they're actually helping to advance the CCP's goals. Democratically, of course. They're basically like cute dogs that creepy guys get to lower women's guards and then keep them from realizing what a threat they are. Oh, aren't you adorable Revolutionary Committee of the Chinese Kuomintang? Yes, you are. While they all work for the CCP, these parties target different segments of society. The Jiosan Society, for example, has a lot of intellectuals and teachers. Despite its name, the Taiwan Democratic Self-Government League is made up of Taiwanese who support the CCP, not Taiwan's independent democratic government. The China Democratic League, which at 330,000 members is the largest of the eight political parties, has a mix of people from the education, media, arts, and culture sectors. All the members are vetted by the government's United Front Work Department, which is not only in charge of managing them, but also making sure they don't get too big. Because, you know, you wouldn't want them doing something crazy like challenging the CCP. If they did, I'd say their odds of surviving are about as good as a banana in a volcano. So what do you think about China's claims to democracy? Let us know in the comments below. And remember, China Uncensored is able to keep making videos like this because of viewers like you either by liking and subscribing, sharing the show with friends and family, buying an awesome t-shirt from our merch store at chinauncensored.tv slash merchandise, or through direct support on the crowdfunding website Patreon or the exclusive social media platform Locals. As a thank you to the fans who support us directly, I respond to their questions on the show. Today's question comes from Logan on Patreon. He asks, when exactly are the spring and fall invasion windows for Taiwan? Well, Logan, friend of the show Ian Easton from Project 2049 has written about this in his book, The Chinese Invasion Threat. The best times for an amphibious invasion across the Taiwan Strait are in April and in October. But both months still have their problems. It's very foggy in April, and there are still some risks of typhoons in October. But if the Chinese Communist Party were to invade Taiwan across the strait, they couldn't do it completely in secret. They would have to prepare an amphibious assault in advance, which other countries might be able to see happening 60 or even 90 days ahead of time. Also, once they land on Taiwan, it won't be easy for them either. 
But an amphibious assault is just one way China could attack Taiwan. It could also do something like a naval blockade of Taiwan. That's not as dependent on good weather in the Taiwan Strait, and it could cause a lot of problems, especially if other countries don't step up to help Taiwan break the blockade. Thanks for your question, Logan, and for supporting China Uncensored on Patreon. To learn more about how you can support the show, go to patreon.com slash China Uncensored, where you can also get cool perks like a special monthly chat with me or having me answer your questions on the show. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.